Value viewers, I hope you are all doing very well. Today's video is the Pennsylvania Railroad's experimental locomotive, the 6446S1 Duplex. Enjoy. Steam locomotive designers, in their ever-continuing search for increased power, came up with a number of experimental engines such as the Pennsylvania's Radical S1 Duplex. The Duplex, a non-articulated double locomotive, was one of the last schemes pursued to save steam superiority over diesels. So there were a lot of people that talked about such locomotives within the industry, but the Pennsylvania Railroad was one of the few railroads who really took action on these. Still the diesel machines kept on a coming. So when the Pennsylvania Railroad came out with their experimental S1 in 1939, it really demonstrated the strong belief in their steam program. The S1 was an extraordinarily powerful machine. It was capable of incredible speeds and yet carefully and dramatically streamlined by Raymond Lowy. His styling gave the great behemoth a measure of grace that belied his astounding weight of over 1 million pounds. The task of creating a visually pleasing show for such a giantess was an accomplishment for which Lowy deserves much praise. And one of the major things that Lowy did for this design was he intentionally kept the ornamentation on the S1 to a bare minimum unlike other streamlines of the era. And that was to stress the locomotive's monolithic brute power. After its completion in 1939 at the Pennsylvania Railroad's famous Altoona shops, the S1 was exhibited at the World's Fair in New York. Here, curious fairgoers gathered around to stare at it while the locomotive was busy churning and steaming away on special treadmill to simulate actual running. After a stint at the fair, the experimental engine worked a section of the Pensy from Chicago to Crestline, Ohio. This section of track was chosen because of its long tangent track and open clearances. The S1 could not operate anywhere else on the system due to its long rigid frame. And while it ran, it was the fastest non-articulated locomotive ever built. R.P. Johnson of the Baldwin Locomotive Works was a principal engineering designer of the S1 duplex type locomotive. The original design of the duplex locomotive was for 16 wheels, but the Pennsylvania Railroad engineers found that totally inadequate for what they wanted on the roads. And so the Pennsylvania Railroad came back to Baldwin with the 6446 wheel arrangement design. And Baldwin actually never built the locomotive. The S1 was actually built in the Pennsylvania Railroad's Altoona workshops. So not only was the S1 duplex the fastest locomotive that hit the rails, it was also the largest rigid frame passenger engine ever built. So the S1 locomotive was numbered 6100, and it had driving wheels of 84 inches in diameter, a great area of 132 square feet, and a boiler some 15% greater than that of any 484 locomotive. Basically, it was essentially an engine for developing high power and at high speed. And because of the S1's participation at the World's Fair, it actually didn't enter service until December of 1940. The S1 was intended for everyday duty on all of the Pennsylvania Railroad's lines. And unfortunately, the great length of the locomotive itself prevented it from going on the curved lines of the Pennsylvania Railroad. So in other words, the locomotive was too long to navigate curves on much of the Pennsylvania Railroad's uh, main line. And furthermore, the locomotive was further restricted on to certain lines because originally the design called for 67,500 pound axle load. However, the lo when completed, the locomotive was 73,880 pounds and simply put, it's too heavy for some of the track line. And as a result of these issues, the locomotive was limited to the 283-mile Crestline to Chicago division, on which it proved capable of hauling 1,225 tons at an average speed of 66 miles an hour. With smaller loads, the locomotive achieved very high speeds, and although the Pennsylvania Railroad and its official locomotive historian were silent on the subject, it was widely believed to have exceeded 120 miles an hour on many occasions. There were, however, problems, particularly with slipping, not helped by the fact that only 40% of the total engine weight was carried on the driving wheels, which is not good at all. 
In comparison, the much older K4 locomotives on the Pennsylvania Railroad had 65% of their weight over the driver. And despite the limited and variable experience gained by the Pennsylvania Railroad with the S1, they went ahead and ordered two more duplex locomotives from Baldwin in July of 1940. The performance requirement was reduced to the haulage of 880 tons and 100 miles an hour, and this could be met. And that was met by the 4444T1 locomotive. And subsequently, that order did become the T1 class. The benefits of a duplex design included lighter machinery, shorter cylinder strokes, less wear, lower piston thrust, smaller, more efficient cylinders, and a more stable frame than an articulated underframe. Also, no hinge connection had to be maintained. And also, reduced hammer blows on the track resulted in lo lower maintenance cost. Two sets of drivers with four wheel each could have lighter running gear than a locomotive with all four axles coupled together. Smaller and lighter moving parts ensured less wear and tear. And to go along with that, Baldwin's chief engineer believed that the eight coupled two cylinder locomotives of the time were at or near their practical limits in terms of steam flow. And he believed that cylinder efficiency could be improved at high speed by gaining the same power from four smaller cylinders for proportionately larger valves. The boiler for the S1 was the largest built by the Pennsylvania Railroad with 660 square feet of direct heating surface. The total heating surface area of the S1 was 7,746 square feet. It was 99.3% as massive as the boiler for the Union Pacific 4000 Big Boys. In terms of drawbar horsepower, the S1 was 13% more powerful than the Big Boy with 7,200 horsepower and 6,345 horsepower respectively. At the time it was built, the cost of the S1 was $669,780, which in today's money equals $14,091,018, which is just a staggering amount for a single locomotive. And that was over twice the, uh, the cost of the T14444 locomotive. So with its limitations on the main lines of where it could run, and the overall success and value of the locomotive, simply put, there were no more in that class that were going to be built. Another problem with the S1 was because of its huge size, it had to be turned around at Crestline, Ohio, within the engine house there. And as such, the S1 had to be turned on the Y at Crestline whenever it was in town, and it suffered from repeated derailments because of this. So here are some, a couple more records here. In terms of tractive effort and drawbar horsepower, the S1 was the most potent reciprocating steam locomotive ever built for passenger service. And during a test run between Chicago, Illinois, and Crestline in December of 1940, the S1 managed to reach 100.97 miles per hour on a level track with a 1,350 ton passenger stock behind it which was equal to 24 post-war lightweight passenger cars. In this same test run, the S1 also achieved an average speed of 66 miles per hour, which was 27% faster than the average scheduled speed of the earlier K4s. And very unofficially, the S1 duplex was said to eclipse the Mallard speed record of 126 miles an hour on numerous occasions, and many claim the engine exceeded the 152 miles an hour on the Fort Wayne to Chicago run. The S1 duplex managed to serve between Chicago and Crestline, Ohio for almost five and a half years, and that made it the longest serving record among all experimental steam engine prototypes of the Pennsylvania Railroad, and that's including the Q1 and the S2. So with that, the following specifications apply to the Pennsylvania Railroad's S1 6446 duplex locomotive. The overall length was 140 feet 2.5 inches. The width was a slender 10 feet 7 inches. The height was 16 feet. The main drivers were 84 inches. The lead diameter bogey was 36 in inches. The trailing diameter bogies were 42 inches. The adhesive weight was 281,440 pounds. The locomotive itself weight was 608,170 pounds. So you can see where that adhesive weight is substantially lower than what it should be. The tender weight when it was empty was 197,000 pounds and 
and the total weight of the locomotive and tender was 1,060,000 pounds. The tender type was a 250 P8416 wheel tender. The fuel type was coal. The fuel capacity was 52,900 pounds. The water capacity was 24,230 U.S. gallons. The firebox grade area was 132 square feet. The boiler was 100 inches. The boiler pressure was 300 PSI. The heating surface total was 7,746 square feet. The firebox itself was 660 square feet. The cylinders were four, and the cylinder size were 22 inches by 26 inches. Wall shirt valve gears were used. The claimed actual maximum speed was 141 miles an hour. The power output was 7,200 horsepower when hauling 1,200 tons at 100 miles an hour. The tractive effort was 76,403 pounds. And a factor of adhesion was a very low 3.68, which attributed to the wheel slippage along with the weight over the drivers. And the locomotive was retired in 1946. The locomotive was scrapped in 1949. And with that, we'll wrap up the video. And I'll wrap up by saying thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed today's content, hit the like button. And also, if you have not subscribed to the profile, please do so. Both factors greatly help the channel grow. And also turn on all of your notifications if you want to see all of my uploads, which is one or two uploads a day. And visit our print shop at nickelplatelimited at etsy.com if you want to support the channel in that way. And we thank you once again.